Crash 4 makes me want to do this. And the reason why is because the game is just garbage. It's actually so bad. First of all, this is Rogues. Welcome to the channel. Like and sub if you enjoy the content, if you agree with the takes, because some of these takes apparently are really spicy, are real hot takes. But bro, you get what I cook. And I'm cooking Crash 4 today because Crash 4 is nothing but a load of crap. It's really bad. And I'm going to explain why. Why is Torna a lesbian? Why do they make some feminist propaganda insert into Crash Bandicoot 4? What the actual... Bro, it's stupid. The game studios are at their meeting and they're like, okay, we need to create a feminist icon so legendary that the kids of today's generation will look up to this character and be like, I want to be exactly like her. And they're like, bro, the deadline's coming. We don't really care about the shit. Let's just think of something really quickly. And they're like, Bro, let's just make them have short hair and make them have their hair dyed and we're just going to save the world. It's actually brilliant. Bro, the Illuminati aren't going to kill us now. Bro, they literally do in every game. Just let it die. Just make a normal character. Talking about characters, why does Dingo Doll have to be a good guy? Bro, this guy was like menacing, right? He was actually cool. And now he's just like, bro, he's got a restaurant. He's Dingo's diner. Are you kidding me? Of course, they make him a beast as well, just so he seems like a nicer character. Oh, it's just a bubbly fat guy character type. Oh, yeah. And in the other games as well, Dingo Doll actually has some sort of like character growth, a character arc, because in the original games, he's like some evil henchman working for Cortex. And then when Cortex doesn't have as much power in Crash Twin Sanity, that's when Dingo Doll is running his own game. He's the Don. He's actually searching for the treasure by himself. He doesn't have some boss. And it's just kind of cool to see. It's only subtle. But it's good. And now he's some fat chef with a water gun. Bro, <laughs> you can't make it up. Bro, they're literally like, fire's bad. Okay, what's the opposite of fire? Water. Bro, he's a good guy now. Look, he's a good guy, guys. Even if I was a bad guy and had a redemption to being a good guy, I would still rock a flame for her because it's badass. Dingo Doll's a nerd. Dingo's diner is big and ready for you. Now, Cortex in this game hasn't changed an awful amount, like, he's not a completely different character, but there's probably a few changes which I might have forgotten about, so just for the sake of this video, Cortex is trash. Pretty much every character they've done is trash. It appears to be a door between dimensions. Why did you just search that up on Google, your little computer? <laughs> That's one thing as well, they just make Coco sound like the smartest character in the whole entire universe. Like, there's no way she can prove what that is in front of her just from her computer. Stupid. And Coco's redesign is definitely the worst redesign in the history of gaming. Why is there a cutscene where Torna pretends to be best friends with Dingo Dial? And in the same cutscene, why is the gangster Nitrous Oxide showed to be a pathetic loser? And why does Entropy have a relationship with his altered dimensional self in this hillbilly script? Literally, this is all in one cutscene. It's actually a mess. And then after all of that, you defeat Entropy. You think you save the day that the bad guys have finally lost from the Crash Bandicoot Avengers. And that this story has had some sort of overall arc. Not a great one, but it's had an arc. Oh wait, here's an extra four bonus missions going around acting like Bill Gates' best friend, pretending to save the environment, kicking bins in the face for some reason they got eyes. This is by far the dullest experience I've ever had in a platformer, and I don't think I'm alone on this. And even if I was, like I said it before in other videos, I don't care. It's the truth. This is shit. And then after that last mission, you're predicting the most obvious plot twist in storytelling history, which is Dr. Neo Cortex betraying Crash Bandicoot. He decides to go back in time to try and make it so Crash never even existed. Now, I don't know how he manages to make it so the time mask specifically goes back to this specific point in time when Crash Bandicoot was about to be made. It doesn't make any sense, okay? It's full of just plot convenience and everything. Everyone's going to be talking like, oh, it's just a kid's game. Bro, it doesn't make sense. At least the other games actually made sense. And then you defeat Cortex and you banish him to some alter dimensional realm of, oh, you know what? I'm just getting up and leave. Bro, it's just stupid. I'm not even making this. But Rogue, stop using your brain for five seconds and just play the game. The gameplay is actually really amazing. Yeah, the gameplay is awful. But then again, I can understand how this can be seen as some sort of hot take. But then again, not really. The game is just poor in every aspect. Like, the animation for the slide into the spin makes you look like you're trying to, like, sweep the floor like some sort of, like, kung fu ability. What is this? My overall point is that the game just feels so bog standard and just stale. Okay, wall riding. I've seen that before. Quantum Mask. This feels like just some sort of, like, platformer gimmick at this point. Every Quantum Mask in this game feels like a chore. 
You can't deny as well, some of the levels in this game are downright atrocious. Oh look, it's Spyro in the background and that character from Skyland as we all had to, we had to place on that disc. Bro, Skyland was garbage, but you know, this is even worse somehow. It's annoying as well, because some of the levels actually do slap. Like Run It Bayo, bro, the soundtrack in that is incredible. Also, you've got the Polar Bear mission when you're chasing down Cortex. Okay, yeah, maybe it pulls on the strings of the Twin Sanity nostalgia a little bit, but... Is so good. And then you've got the tape missions, which for some reason people actually like. Like, how can you like this? All you're doing is playing some 2D platformer, jumping on boxes, and that's about it. There's no enemies in the way, there's no nothing. I get it, like it's some like Crash Bandicoot backstory. He's training in Cortex's lab. Oh, so cool. That's like when people say they want to watch the backstory of some really cool character in a TV show. It's like, bro, just leave it. I like the mystery. If you actually wanted to make this interesting, you could have made it so Crash actually gets better as the training missions go along. Maybe he starts off as really weak and then he learns some things along the way and then Cortex is impressed. No, Cortex is just impressed by his ability at the very start. It's like he's got superhero powers, which I wouldn't have been annoyed about. But then again, why are these missions here in the first place to begin with if that's the case? Oh wait, I know why they're here. Oh look, Crash Bandicoot 4 is the hardest game ever to complete on the history of planet Earth. It's harder than the other Crash games. It's up there even harder than Dark Souls. Oh my gosh, Crash Bandicoot 4, headline news. This is the most crazy game, buy it now. No, don't buy this game. Don't buy it if you're drunk. Don't buy it if you're on cocaine. Don't even play the game if it comes out for free. This game is trash.